Oh, you there? Hello, I'm Álvaro García and this is Real Time Mayhem. Today I want to show you uh, a bit of the workflow I'm doing from Blender, Rigify to Unreal Engine in order to have high-res characters. Uh, there are different workflows and approaches you can do. Obviously, if you are doing uh, muscle simulation and skin deformation to the level of uh, using FEM scene, for example, in Houdini or Vellum, uh, you still need to rely either in Alembic, 95% of the cases, just to say you a percentage, that always looks smarter, or a 5% of doing a sticky bone, for example, using labs. Uh, that is one of the tools that you should have a look is uh, again the toolkit of labs in Houdini so you can explore deformations not 100% accurate but what it's gonna do this tool is to take the frame range and it's gonna calculate the curvature so you can explore this with uh, sticky bones so it's a little bit more optimized that, than calculating the entire vertex position per vertex per frame in a GPU texture, that is what is going to happen when you import an Alembic. So, yes, that's one of the options. Um, however, you can also rely, if you want to keep the idea of having high res characters, in uh, rigging a low res character in Blender and then uh, subdivide this character and applying a displacement on top so you can preserve the weights of the original low res mesh. And that is what we are gonna do, so better than seeing my face, let's see the face of this other beautiful guy. So once I have my OBJ inside Blender, the first thing I'm gonna do is to scale down the entire body to 0 0.01 of the original scale. This is a kind of VFX workflow to have uh, rigs compatible with massive environments. And also Rigify comes with this scale, so that's a good sign. Uh, once I bring my meta rig, the human meta rig, not the basic one, but the human meta rig, uh, why is not in the origin? Well, it's going to be created in the position of your pivot. So to reset the pivot, you have to press Shift S and then just put the pivot in the origin. Now I can create my meta rig and it's going to be in the origin. So now I can take in object mode the meta rig and scale it down until I'm more or less comfortable with the scale of the original mesh that is already scaled. Then I can put also the visibility of the joints to be visible in front so it's going to be easier to rig it later. And also now I need to apply all the transforms both in the mesh and in the meta rig. So everything is clean and beautiful to start. Now I can select the meta rig, go to edit mode and with the symmetry on I can start applying every single joint with this symmetry. There are different workflows depending on the artist, depending on the rigger. Uh, one I like is the idea of taking the joints and a snap, you can see the magnet on the top, a snap to the volumes. This kind of feature allows you to take a joint and use the transform and it's gonna snap to the volume in the 3D space of the mesh you are selecting the cursor. So, so now you can see, for example, in the fingers, how fast is that? I can start with the tip and then I can just go upwards and, you know, it's a matter of putting music in the background, grab a tea and just enjoy the process. It's nice. Remember that you can roll the joints a bit so you have a better orientation. And yeah, we can talk about cleaning the axis, we can talk about many technicalities of the rig, but I prefer to have a full rig fast and then improve it in the future. So once you are more or less happy with the skeleton in your body, you can jump to the face. The face is a messy area, there are a lot of joints, so the best way to work in a clean way is to change the visibility to a stick. Also, you can go to the bone layers and hide all the layers you don't need. I mean, in this case, with the stick, is pretty clean. And the last thing I want to do for this workflow is to change from volume snapping to face snap. So every single time I take a joint, it's gonna snap to the surface of the mesh. So this is very convenient for the face rig. Now it's a matter of common sense, just try to keep the loops of your mesh so everything is in parallel. For example, the eyebrows joints should be more or less in a parallel line with the eyelids, etc. Also do the same thing with the mouth and trying to keep the things clean and with a little bit of, you know, flow.
Now I'm gonna import the iMesh of the Digital Human Project from Epic Games. You can just download this project, open it, export the eye, and that's all yours. I recommend you to use this geometry because it's optimized for the eye shader. I'm gonna scale the eye until it makes sense with the proportions, and then I'm gonna align the joint of the eye into the eye. There are many good ways to do this. My ways are not the best, but at least I enjoy the process. What is my way? intuition so i just rotate the eye until it makes sense i put the middle in something that makes sense trust me i've never seen in my life a human with perfect parallel eyes so don't rub it hole too much it's gonna be okay Once I feel good with the position of all the joints, I'm gonna press the magical button and generate rig. So now it's gonna be ready to be weighted. I'm gonna select the mesh of the body, then the armature, Ctrl P, armature deform with automatic weights. In the case you have an error, it could be most likely because precision of the heat map. So the best thing you can do is select the mesh and go to the edit mode, select all the vertices, and then go to clean up, merge by distance and then try to merge with something very low like 0 0.001 and see if some vertices are already merged and then repeat the process beautiful it is working so obviously the weighting is not gonna be perfect but for the purpose of this tutorial we are more than good to go before weighting remember to apply all the transforms so you have everything clean with 111 of a scale so now let's repeat the same process with the two eyes. Let's select the eye, let's select the armature, and then deform with automatic weights. So this is a very important step. You need to select the eye and go to object mode, then to the vertex groups and delete all the groups. Then you need to do a new group with exactly the same name of the joint you want to drive, the eye. In this case, you can see there M, C, H, I, L or R, depending on the eye. Then select the eye, go to edit mode, select all the vertices and assign that selection to the group. Double check that the specific bone in the eye actually deforms. This is important. So I'm ready to go. I'm gonna select the meshes and the armature and then you can see what I'm actually exporting in the video, but just to let you know, I'm just not applying the units, I'm not needing any kind of animation, and more important, I'm only exporting those bones that actually deform. I don't need the leaf bones at all. Awesome, we got our low res rig for the animators, but now we need our high res rig for Unreal Engine. We are gonna apply the next modifiers. The first one, subdivide. And we are gonna subdivide between two or three depending what is the resolution of your base mesh. Then we are gonna add a displacement. And this is an important step because the displacement map has to be exported with any other software as a 16 bits and then has to be read as linear. But also, and more importantly, because we already have this rig in a very low scale, we need to put our strength maybe to 0 0.01. And you need to check that the projection happens in the UV space. You might have some artifacts because the new poly count. If that's the case, you can apply weighted normals in the very end of the chain. As you can see, we have a very high resolution mesh. The good news is all weighted. So how can we apply this? Well, applying the modifiers from the top to the bottom. For the export, I'm gonna repeat exactly the same process in the high res. I'm gonna select all the meshes, the armature, and I'm gonna export only the deforming bones. The first thing I want to do when I import my high-res FBX is to reset all the parameters in the importer. The only thing I'm gonna change is the skeleton to leave it clean. However, you can or you should use the low-res skeleton because it's gonna be compatible.
I want to double check that everything works okay, so what I'm gonna do is to go to Blender and open the original low res rig and animate a simple test. Remember this is not an animation or rigging tutorial, it's more a workflow tutorial, so don't expect from me to have a perfect animation, it's just more about seeing that everything works. However, I want to recommend you to learn about the different skills if you supervise or you direct a project, because that's the language you are going to speak with the artist later. If you know their field and their medium, it's going to be easier to give feedback and to collaborate. For example, if you are directing the original sound score, it's good that you learn a little bit about music theory, because it's going to help a lot to communicate. It doesn't matter how good filmmaker you are, if the language you use is not good enough to put your thoughts into the screen. So now I'm ready to export the animation and here is the difference. I only export the armature and now yes, I baked animation. You can check the parameters I put here in the screen. I'm gonna create a new level sequence, I'm gonna drag and drop my high res character into the sequencer and I'm gonna import my animation. I'm gonna reset like this, like pressing 10 times to be sure that everything is okay. And now my animation is gonna be compatible with the high res character. So that was the first part. In the second part, we're gonna work more in the look development. So please, if you like the video, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, all these beautiful things. Also, you can find below the links of the Discord channel of Real Time Mayhem and the Patreon page. Thank you for watching and elbow goodbye.